Hello, folks. Welcome. Hello. Yes, it is I, the one, the only hobo Tom. I'm feeling much better today. Got to play with my cat a little bit more. And I have a cute picture of her using her Christmas gift. I got her a little anglerfish bed. She looks kind of cute in it. She looks like she's getting eaten by a giant fish, which is always fun to see. And she's just staring at me because she knows that I might get her and use her and show her up here on a hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I'm the one, the only hobo Tom. I have to make decisions to make, but tomorrow I don't know if I'll, because I know I'm going to miss AEW. The thing is, do I want to be on the whole effing show? I'll leave a comment tomorrow. I have to think about that. Only because Wednesdays are like hectic days. Also, the first faculty meeting back from break. I'm sure I've managed to screw something up. It's just a matter. This is one of those things. It's not a matter of if I screw something up. It's just a matter of when I screw something up. So that being said, I'd like to welcome everyone. Reviewing, thank you very much. I have a bunch of thank yous to give out. So, Bar Boron Corin, you sir get that six count. Why is Waldo? Oh, I can read your name for a change. That's always a good sign. You, sir, are a master air guitarist.
Alberto El Obero. You, sir, are digging those funky vibes coming from your own briefcase boombox. And Thomas Keller, who are you? It's the first time I think I've ever seen you leave a comment, sir. You, sir, can crawl back into that hole you came from. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I just realized that I still have a saved. I think I made it into a GIF of ACH. Wow, I forgot about that. He left WWE and he's, I don't know, whatever. I'm not here to talk about ACH though. I'm here to talk about some Impact Wrestling. And this was a weird show because it's the go home show. It definitely felt like a go home show. For impacts hard to kill, I think that's the name of their upcoming pay per view on Sunday, which I can't live stream because of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Boo! Not recovering New Japan again. It's this way, I want to stay up from a ridiculous hour of the morning. I can do other fun things, I can find a girlfriend. Have a girl, have fun with a girl, have fun with a woman at that two in the morning instead of watching sweaty guys wrestle and punch each other and, and kick each other rather uncomfortably, repeatedly around people wearing a bunch of masks. But that's neither here nor there. So, if this impact is, it is a go home show, uh, I will be doing a review of the impact go home show. Because I cannot live stream. Sucks. I am stuck not live streaming until April 4th. That makes kind of sense. Because of the weird days in February. Yeah, February is always an odd month. But that's okay. My birth month, so I'm happy about that. But let's get back to some Impact Wrestling. Eventually, I will have a girlfriend up on the show. Every so often, I get a woman here. Whoa. So, Eddie Edwards. Um, it just starts off kind of cold. Eddie Edwards just starts being up Mike Elgin. And then they go to their intro, which is a really good intro. It's just really weirdly produced. I don't know. Is that a thing? Are they taking their cues based on the hobo studio here? God, I hope not. That's not good. <laughs> that means I could be a producer for them. Yeah, because it would be hard to be a writer for WWE. I'll tell you what, I would I would have no clue what to do. I'm like, dude, I just want some good wrestling matches. I'd be like, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Yeah, let's phrase this a little bit differently here. I'd actually, I'd actually, probably make the performers work more, but it would probably be a better product though. Instead of saying here, here's your script, like hours before you're supposed to do it, you get with them like a day or two ahead of time. Like, well, where do you guys really want to go with it? After, of course, Finn says, "I want some good shit." Yeah, that's probably not happening with me. Then I get on YouTube and, and tell everyone spoilers. I'd be fired! After I got $100,000, I'd be like, how long would that last me? But actually, it'd probably last me about five years. Wait a second. Hire me as a writer. But... That's okay. That's neither here nor there. So we um, so we had Eddie Edwards taking on Mike Elgin in a match, finding the bell, and ring, taking the ring. Um, Eddie Edwards just 
takes chops across the chest. It's like, oh, that's so so painful. And then eventually, so the so Eddie Edwards just beats up Mike Elgin. Eventually, Mike Elgin takes the other hand. This is a very New Japan style match. Mike Elgin probably thinks he's back in Japan. Mike Elgin was watching way too much Wrestle Kingdom and New Year's Dash. He was having flashbacks of stuff. Uh, that Eddie Edwards does get the Huracron on the outside, and then they go back to chopping each other. Again, this wrestling match, it was it didn't feel like a wrestling match. It just felt like a fight. <laughs> it felt like a work shoot instead of a shoot that was work. I mean, if you saw the Kenta Goto match, oh, those were stiff shots. That just felt like they're like, let's fight. That was the that was uh, that was the shoot that was worked instead of a work that was shoot. Just always, I don't know how they can kick each other in the head. I would fall twice on my neck, and I'd be like, just just get it over with. In me, like, I'm not getting up, ref. My neck. The one thing I've learned as a kind of high school and collegiate athlete, you never want to mess with is your neck. Like you start messing with neck and vertebrae and muscles and and everything goes south. I think a couple times again, I dislocated the one shoulder twice, the one once. That was enough to realize. I think I've had a stinger a few times, but you get dislocated shoulders and you're like, if it, that feels that bad. I don't want to know. It's like to slip a disc in your neck. That sounds, ugh. so whenever I hear about neck surgeries, it's just, I'm just like, you just retire. I just want your autograph. That's, that's it. You can, I think I only have to see in my, in my bucket list of wrestling. Who else do I want to see? Oh, well, well, four. No, no, just Okada, Yano, and Suzuki. I think for the most part, I've seen everyone else I've wanted to. Except for the fact that I did not get an autograph from Kenneth Lorraine. I'm still steamed about that. God, if I got that autograph, why would I be fanboy? And then I'd be arrested because I'd take my pants off, jump in the ring, do my moonsault onto some police officers, and probably get sent to the loony bin for a couple days. Or at least sent to the pokey in the paddy wagon. I've been told it's very racist, but I don't care. I think it's because I'm white I can use those terms. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm not. I won't get into any of that. Though not tonight. I already did my rant and rave last night, so I'm only good for one rant and rave for a week. So again, uh, it, it seemed like Mike Elgin was back in New Japan. Uh, then Eddie Edwards, he he then began to wrestle. He did a lot of counter wrestling, and they did mention the strong style. I wonder if that's a WWE term or just like a generally accepted wrestling term. Uh, then. Here. Can they just exchange a lot? Still a lot of trading blows. Uh, Elegant eventually kicks out of a Tiger Bomb, the Phoenix Bomb, but they, they just no sold everything. Well, what's wrong? Why are people like no selling? Like, go ask Lex Luger what happened when when, <laughs> when the brew when uh oh no no. Uh, I can't remember his name though. When when Brody was no selling for him, yeah, he was he was absolutely terrified. Yeah, I'd be absolutely terrified if Elgin was no selling what I was doing. I'd be like, please don't kill me. I'm sorry. But with that again, they even trade submissions was just pretty fun. This match <sighs> probably went about ten minutes too long. The crowd wanted to see a table. They got no table. The crowd was not happy about that. I think this was the end of the tapings they did. I want to say they were done tapings kind of mid-December-ish. I couldn't give you an exact date, but 
definitely like two weeks before Christmas because they all had like a month off, which is pretty cool. Grant, you're not getting paid that much, but if you're if you're working in one area for an extended time, or actually if you're just doing a bunch of tapings in one area for an extended time, you don't have the travel schedule, the travel issues, get a month off. That sounds like a pretty good deal. But then you just have to worry about like money stuff. Again, if you're a top talent, you don't have to worry about that. Because I, I, I know Killer Cross and Scarlet Bordeaux had issues about money. I think when they became Impact and the Anthem group took over, I think they rectified most of the salary problems that the talent was having. But well, with that being said, that's neither here nor there. This match was probably about 10 minutes too long and ended with a, a buckle bomb to an Elgin bomb. Again, about 10 minutes too long for an opening match. It was a weird cold opening. It's a ham sandwich. And then in a shocker, we have the Desi Hit Squad coming out. And they're, they're taking on TJP. Ugh, and Fall Ma and Daga. And this, it was really interesting because the dead, uh, TJP, he's all inked up. He just said, I'm done with WWE. I'm getting whatever i done once in my body. I'm getting tattoos all over the place. Yeah. But I guess he's part Filipino. I know it is part of the. Pacific tradition to get a lot of tattoos. Uh, he's not Maori, because I think, or it used to be, I'm old. I think the only people that would actually get facial tattoos had to prove that they were of Maori or Pacific Island descent. Now it's whatever. I don't know why you want to get tattooed on the face because if you have to find an office job, that's not going. That's not going. I have my one tattoo. Maybe one day you'll, you guys will see it. And honestly, I was happy with my one tattoo. When I work, no one knows I have a tattoo because I have to dress professionally. That's the one reason why I got what I got, where I got it. And I think sometimes it scares me because... People say, what's that on your leg? And I said, what? Because <laughs> this is Florida. I don't know what's crawling here. But then they're like, oh, what's that green thing on your leg? I'm like, there's a lizard on my leg. There's a spider. There's, ah. And I look down. And I'm like, oh, it's my tattoo. And that's, I'm like, then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's nice. That's my one mark. If I rob a bank, I just have to wear long pants. That's all. Other than that, I have no identifying marks. Uh, so we had the Desi Hit Squad come out. Again, TJP is all inked up. Alaba's still good. And then Daga comes out. Uh, Daga gets tagged in. For the most part, TJP kind of holds his own. Daga gets tagged in. And then even there's a Dama miscue. The great Dama slaps Rahit Raju, I think. I do get those I do get those guys confused. I just know the Desi Hit Squad. They are Impact's version of the Bollywood Boys. If you don't know who I'm talking about. And then Fall Ball and TJP. They're actually, they're actually pretty good tag team. They do the like, uh, friendship double elbow drop. Uh, Fall Ball. Again, he was running the ropes for some reason. And he, he got gassed out. I don't know why TJP made him do that. Does he hit squad and made their comeback? I mean, Raj, he has some good stuff. Uh, and again, they do good tag team work. They're the heel tag team. They're better. They know how to distract. They do all the kind of traditional distractions and all that. Uh, TJ Key and Follow Ball. Eventually, we have some double dives going on. Uh, Dago again splashes everyone and even Follow Ball dives. I don't think there were enough people to catch Follow Ball. But you know what? The shocker was. Uh, oh, the, the bigger guy that does a hit squad hit his finisher 
on poor little TJP. And the Desi Hit Squad win. Whoa, that was a shocker. This was actually a really fun match to watch. This is a cheeseburger match. And this is where it kind of gets kind of dull. Uh, we have OVE give give their uh, uh, promo. Mad Men Fulton speaks. Wow. He can speak. That's pretty cool. It actually sounds really good when he speaks, too. And the Rascals were there giving their promo because <laughs> we might as well have Ace Austin versus uh, tr um, Trey with Trey's mom on a with match. <laughs> Only because now Ace Austin just come back supreme. He's going after actually kind of hot Trey's mom. And if you've seen the promos in the treehouse, even the other rats will say, yeah, your mom's hot. So yeah, my mom. No. I can't get up. I, I have... Hi, Trey's mom. That was, that's always cool. Uh, Tessa gives a promo, then uh, kind of a back and forth Sa uh, Sammy Callahan promo all about his life. Tessa gives the, kind of the same thing. This is your life, but it's done classy though. This is what WWE, actually they, they do do this, but not during the shows. They do it after the show for like a half hour. And then we saw Magnum TA. Whoa, Magnum TA got old. I was not kind to him. Uh, I don't think we saw much. I don't, we didn't see much of Tully Blanchard, though. Oh, wait a second. I don't think we saw anything of Tully Blanchard. I had some old pictures of him. I guess Tessa was born after Tully wasn't like retired or, or like was born at the end of Tully's career. I'll tell you what. She's a cute sister, too. Yeah. And she, she actually has a lot of sisters, too. Not the really, like, young ones. That's just pervy. No, I mean, like, the old, the, like, I think her older sister. She, she looks nothing like Tessa, though. The youngest one, you can tell, looks a little bit more like Tessa. The older one is like, whoa. And that's cool that Tessa kind of wrestles and has fun with his, her, her nieces and nephews. That's fun. I do that, too. Um, I think I have pictures somewhere. Maybe it's it's archived here somewhere here on YouTube of me actually having my nephews up in suplex positions because they're like, whoa, you can actually do that. I think my sister's actually more shocked that I can do that. But I'm not shocked. But that's a whole other issue. Then we have um, Havoc and Susie in the back. And Susie's <laughs> the sinister minister locks Susie in a closet. That's terrible. So again, we have Susie in the closet. Havoc comes up for her match. She's taking on Rosemary. Rosemary got a little pudgy there. She's still hot, but she's not as womanly defined, I guess. Because like normally, like like Jordan Grace is hot, and she's thick. She's thick in all the right places, baby. But Rosemary just just got chubby. Still, hey Rosemary, I'm single too. And then Havoc there. Havoc actually looks like she lost a little weight, which is good. Uh, starts off really as a brawl. Uh, Havoc eventually starts to beat up Rosemary, and then Susie gets out. Susie stole the show, folks. She comes out. She's like looking around, like waving to people, shaking people's hands. It scared a loud noises though. And Don Callis was really nice there. She's like, hey, would you want to put these earphones on? Yes, yeah, so you can hear things in them. Oh, and here's the piece you can talk with. It's like, oh, thank you. And then, of course, uh, uh, sinister, the sinister minister, that's the only way I know him, James something from hell, uh, comes out and says, no, Susie, you can't be talking with Don Callis. And Don Callis gets all upset. Don Callis also. I hope he's okay because he lost a lot of weight. I mean, he, look, he, he just looks skinny. 
It's weird. So I remember him being a little bit more filled out in the face, at least. But no, now he's really small. And then as soon as he gets out, she looks scared. Again, she just goes out. She's having a good time. Uh, Sinister Minister wants her to have nothing to do with Rosemary. Uh, yeah, James Mitchell, that's right. I always forget his name sometimes. But Havoc nailed Rosemary with a top rope draping DDT and then hit a tombstone. Whoa, that's a great combo. And Havoc pinned Rosemary. And really, the most interesting part of the match was Susie's interaction. Other than that, it was a kind of short match. Rosemary, I don't think she's been in the ring for a while. Or if she hasn't, might be dark matches. But I'll tell you what, this was eh, a ham sandwich. And then we have a woman six six woman tag match. Kiera Hogan, Madison Rain, and Ty Valkyrie taking on ODB. The old Dashwood who's still around. And Jordan Grace. And wow. There was so much booty in that ring. And ODB got old. Because she was like, that or she was drinking something. Or she was doing something with, with, with RVD. Or, oh, yeah. Because I'll tell you what, she was just flashing <laughs> her cooch to everyone. And there was some kid, yeah, it was this. Some, like, seven-year-old was, like, by the ramp, just staring up. Like, literally looking straight up ODB's outfit. And then she, like, flashed everyone, and then she grabs herself. Oh, ODB is terrible. I forget how old it would be. I think she's I think she's like forty something. Like my age. It looks like she's a little bit older than that. She looks like in her fifties. Uh, that's probably a terrible thing to say, but uh Kiara Hogan has ha is the most booty licious of them all. Um started off kind of a twerk fest. Kiara Hogan and, and Madison Rain who can twerk the most. Ty just comes out, Ty is the best. Uh, Tina Dashwood's okay. She was never, I, I never liked her as Emma. She was okay with Dana Brooke and XT. And then Jordan Grace is amazing looking. And for the most part, it was a classic match. It did get a little clunky, though. It wasn't really smooth. The heels, again, they did the triple team, which was good. ODB's just there. She's just like drinking. It's probably water. But there's a 2% chance. Probably greater than 2%. But there's something else in that flask. Because she just like wrestles with a flask. It's funny. Um, that was the. <laughs> she got. I think it was. Kiera Hogan and, Matt and uh, Madison Rain into the double Bronco Buster. And I forget what the end was because I'm just like. This, it just got clunky. It was, wasn't really smooth. But ODB pinned Ty Valkyrie because Jordan Grace hit her finisher on Ty Valkyrie. She went for the pin. But Jordan Grace got pulled off of Ty by ODB. ODB got the pin. I know they're having a triple threat match between ODB, Jordan Grace, and Ty Valkyrie. The Sunday. So that kind of sets up that angle. So it was it was okay. It was a, a ham sandwich. Oh <laughs> the other the other funny thing that happened. I forgot to mention this, but as they're coming down, ODB makes her entrance, starts to flash. Her, her, her cooch to everyone because she would just lift up her dress. We'll get back to her when we talk about um, NWA. But then she just like slapped the old Dashwood on the ass because <laughs> you could tell because you could see, you could hear the hand, you could, you could see the hand, you could hear the slap, 
And you can see Tanila go, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think she's used to being slapped on the, on the high period, or at least by another woman. You know, I'm single too. I need that green card to work in the U.S. I digress though. And there's Moose and Moose and, and RVD. Moose is saying, yeah, I know you've had history and Rob, and Rob Van Dam's like, what? We've wrestled before? I don't remember yesterday. Yeah, there are reasons why. Then Katie Ford was sticking her tongue all over him. Listen, if Katie Ford's sticking her tongue all over me, I'm not going to remember anything anyway. So... Yep, so then this was the main event. It was Moose and RVD taking on Rhino and Brian Cage. Really heavy striking for the most part by Moose. By Moose and Cage start off. Rhino gets in. Eventually hit, and they do hit the double team backdrop. Uh, him and Cage do that to Moose. Rob Nenet gets in, and Rob Nenet is very disinterested. I mean, his kind of classic Rob Van Dam moves, poses. He went for Rolling Thunder and just like, Nah, I well, got tossed out of the ring, and and actually, Katie Forbes had, saw more action in this ring than than Rob Van Dam did because she grabbed Rhino's foot, hit them up, and no Rolling Thunder. Eventually, then it's just Moose, Moose. So he was going for the five star frog splash, like RVD did not hit that, and Moose actually got pinned. Which was weird. And then Rhino. Rhino's amazing at working the crowd. He's so good. He's like, you want to see it one more time? They're like, one more time. Rhino's one of the... I think it comes with age and experience. Where you know how to work a crowd. Some people have it. Uh, MJF definitely has it. Chris Jericho has it. Rhino has it, though. And it's so hard because... I've seen some WWE pros like Nia Jack. She tried to get the audience hyped. Audience could care less. So it's just one of those things. So Rhino was really good. Again, he got the crowd all hyped up. Uh, Moose lost. He ate the pin. That'll be interesting for my prediction because I have to figure out what the matches are. I know they listed the matches. This match was. It was okay. It was a uh, it's a ham sandwich. I mean, the big takeaway is like Rob Van Dam. Like he just like got up and left with Katie Ford. He's just like he's like, where am I? What? I'm I'm going back to the backstage area. I'm going to the treehouse. Let's show them what the really good time is. Yeah. What day is it? But yeah, and, and then they did a whole bunch of promos from everyone who has a match in the pay per view Hard to Kill, and that's how the show ended. And I was I was like, wait a second, there's still four minutes left. It's like, are they going to cut it off early? No, they did a whole bunch of promos again. It felt like a TNA go home show. Uh, for the most part, this was an okay show. Uh, uh, it was a ham sandwich of a show. You could tell the audience, if the wrestlers didn't get them hyped up, they weren't interested in it. Uh, the one little kid is uh, scarred for life after seeing ODB. I'm scarred for life after seeing ODB. But I'll get to that shortly. Yeah, I mean... Really, there was only one cheeseburger match. Everything else was okay. So that was Impact Wrestling. And again, on Thursday, I'll maybe I'll have Dr. Tom show up, give his predictions, and then I'll do my reaction video on Sunday. So let's take a little break. Oh, one more thing before I take the break, um, because... Impact when they do the after show, they really don't do anything. I think they show like the dark match 
I have a bunch of interviews. No, no, bueno. I'm going to take a spa day. Because I'm going to use the hot tub, the sauna, and the pool, and I'm going to tranquilo for a little bit. And I'm going to feel good. So that's it. So now it's time for our break. And since I'm back, it's time to for some NWA. I was shocked with this. Because this was actually a better sh one hour show than a two hour impact show. And Raw was fun. I hate to say it, but this NWA was on par with Raw. Impact, I think, because people were tired after like three hours, they do they do like multiple tapings. Just where's the crowd out? I think they do like six hour tapings. So that's kind of brutal a little bit. Because, yeah, that makes sense, because that's three two-hour episode. And then there's a... Actually, I think I think it's like five hours, because I know they do little backstage stuff, which is, well, pre-taped or post-taped, but yeah, but it's all put together somehow. Or or they do it... Larry Weiler's action going in the ring and say, oh, we'll, we'll show this next. And this was fun, though. In the Hard Times pay for you the 24th. Bro, that's a Friday, so that's a weird day. Is the NWA pay-per-views going head-to-head -head against SmackDown? And it's also the day, I think, the Rolex 24 starts? Or it's the day before the Rolex 24, so I might be working that day. We'll see. So, uh, I don't know. It would be neat to see... <laughs> A NWA pay per view and see what the big differences are. Then I've seen, and I don't think I would have seen every major pay per view. I think the only thing I missed this year was King of Trios, or last year I missed King of Trios. So I can always make that up a little bit. So it starts off, um, starts off with recap leading up. Uh, Tim Storm gives a promo. Camille still is not talking. She doesn't have to say a word. Fine with that. Then it was uh, Zicky Dice taking on Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Connors. Caleb's he's he's smart because these television tag these television matches there's a stipulation can only last six minutes and five seconds, so you have to win or it's considered a draw, and if it's a draw, no one goes, no one goes, and so with that, uh, he's Caleb. He, he goes for a quick attempts. Makes sense. Again, he's a baby face. Uh, Zicky Dice wastes his time. He knows he has time. Uh, Caleb, he does the chops and the back body drop. That's good. He's actually wrestling with like a wrestling match. Like he has, I actually have only six minutes and five seconds to win. He's, he's again, good head scissors. He sweeps, he swept the leg, which is great. But then, of course, you. Then he also did an amazing Northern Lights suplex, which was cool. It was something two Northern Lights was up. Oh no, um, uh, Zicky Dice actually did a bear hug, turned it into a Northern Lights suplex, which is, I was shocked that he could do that. Uh, he didn't miss a cannonball though, but he did hit the Rude Awakening. Oh, because he hit Snake Eyes, but missed a cannonball. Zicky Dice hit the root, uh, uh, hit the root awakening. Just what it was, the Rider King recruits neck breaker, pause neck breaker, whatever you call it. I forget what he calls it now. It's still the root awakening. I'll say what this was fun though. I was shocked. The action was up there. I mean, you definitely have the heel healing it up. The baby face wants to win. He realizes he has to win. This was a good fun cheeseburger match. And then we have Danny Deals again talking about a wrestling shop. That's I'm fine with that. That's what it is. You have an interview with a question mark, a master of Mongrovian karate. And Aaron Stevens, who's a third degree black belt in Mongrovian karate. They talk about the US champion. And actually the NWA has a lot of undercard titles. 
Because they have the U.S. champion, they'll have the TV title. They actually have a lot of titles for a small organization. They have just, they have, wow, they have more than an impact. Yeah, they have the, they're almost getting there as many titles as the WWE has. But like an eighth of the roster. So they have the tag belts, the heavyweight champion, the U.S. champion, the TV title. They have five belts and a woman's. I didn't even realize that that many. That's impressive. A lot of gold. Uh, but the next so the next match was Thunder Rosa taking on ODB, and wow, I I I can't get things, I can't get pictures out of my head. ODB came to the ring and she was not wearing panties. She was wearing a thong, folks. Yep. You, you can see you can see everything down there. And and I, I saw something and, and I, I closed my eyes and I can't unsee it. It's, it's gonna It's okay. It's just not what I wanted to see. Or it's not from whom I wanted to see. But yeah. Uh, Thunder Rosa goes in there with a hammer lock, then she turns the, the near Kimura lock and guillotine choke. Thunder Rosa is definitely showing off her MMA experience. And Thunder Rosa's hot. I want to know from you guys, what does La Mera Mera mean? Because when I looked it up, the only thing I could find, <laughs> granted I did like a quick search on Google, it's on like Spanish radio station. I have to ask Liz what La Mera Mera. Because I know what Cerro Miedo means I know mascara y cabellos, the, the hair versus match, the hair versus mask match. No mas, that means no more. They tap out sometimes. They've had no mosses, no mas matches. Um. Yeah, I can pick up little things in wrestling. But I can understand what they're doing a little bit. Not much, but I, I can pick it up a little bit. Mascarita y mascarita. That's mask versus match, mask. Mask versus mask, match. So I'm, I'm confused about la mera mera. I don't know if that's bad. I don't know if I'll get fired if I say that to coworkers. I just know it's on her back. I mean, at least I know what Cerro Miedo and a perro and punta. And I know those are bad words. I think one means dog. But when you call a grown man perro, that's not good. Uh, so, again, ODB's ass. And when she got covered, she went all spread eagle. And again, I close my eyes and, and I see things I probably shouldn't see. And I can't unsee them. And then Thunder Rosa, it looks like she, she stole Kenny Omega's pain. That's gimmick infringement. Wow. I'll tell you what, this was a good match, though. Uh, ODB definitely plays the role of the bigger person, kind of manhandling Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa relies on her quickness. Uh, she does the shoulder tackles. Of course, Thunder Rosa's, she's, she's going to go down to ODB's shoulder tackles. Uh, Thunder Rosa's probably half the size. I'll tell you what, the difference is Thunder Rosa has to go to AEW. Thunder Rosa would be a legitimate AEW Women's Champion. She has the height. She has the build. She has the musculature. She has the background. The only thing I'll rant about is that Riho is tiny. I watched my video. Riho is absolutely tiny. I hate to say this. J Jim Cornette's right. She looks like a, a Japanese schoolgirl. Britt Baker's not much better, though. When I saw Britt Baker live, and when I watched my video of Britt Baker, she's skinny. 
the only reason why Britt Baker has a six pack, it's not because she works out. It's because she has nothing covering said six pack. Under Rosa, at least it looks like she has a tummy and like a four pack. That's kind of cute. And I didn't see ribs. And I didn't see collarbone. Or if you do, it's like very well. I can't. Oh, that, that's my. Like you can quasi see where my collarbone is. Only because there's a little divot there. The same is true of Thunder Rosa. There's a little divot there. But it's not like two bones sticking out here. I don't even know how I would do that. But it's just like, ah. And then you can see ribs with Britt Baker. And, and vertebrae. I think she has that nice kind of defined line. But it's not every single bone. So Thunder Rosa is at least cute. Again, Britt Baker just has nothing. Riho is tiny. Chris Stratlander, she's also really cute looking too. Again, she has the tummy, but she has some definition. She has like a two. She has like a it's a flat tummy, which is good. Uh, the French woman had a flat tummy, had a little tummy too. Um, Hikaru Shida, she had a little tummy going. Again, just enough where, yeah, you can see her abs when she, like, breathing heavy. But in normal positions, like, no, it looks like she looks like a human female. Not a skeletal, not a musculoskeletal thing. Thing. Which is probably terrible to say, but oh well. Uh, eventually, let's see here. Thunder Rosa does pick up the win over ODB. So Thunder Rosa is going to challenge. Um, what's her face for the? And I forget. Again, they had dueling chance of Thunder Rosa ODB. So that's good. The crowd was hyped for this match. The crowd gets hyped for this match. I get hyped for this match. The wrestlers were hyped for this match. I'm doubly hyped for this match. This was actually a surf and turf match. I don't think I've ever given a surf and turf rating for NWA yet. This might be the first surf and turf match. So that being said, the Rock and Roll Express here yeah, the Rock and Roll Hotline. They are so stuck in the 80s, it's not even funny. Uh, Nick Aldis comes out. He cuts a promo. Nick Aldis versus Ricky Starks. It's a 6.05 time limit. It was, for the most part, pretty fast action. I was shocked. Um, Aldis, did some, uh, uh, Aldis did some kind of driver. He was just doing cross faces. But Ricky Starks always had that little comeback. He actually looked. He actually has a good-looking sling, sling blade. Seth Rollins has a lousy sling blade. Ben Balor's sling blade just looks like he's jumping and twirling in the air. I think the same is true of Dolph Ziggler when he does a sling blade. Like the sling blade used to be something special, now everyone does it and kind of like lost its, I don't know, its appeal. It's like, well, if everyone's going to do it, it's not doesn't it's not your signature anymore. Uh, again, Starks was really good. He would he would come back. Uh, let's see, there was a Texas Club relief. Spot uh, into a roll up, which is a creative way to use a roll up. I like that, but it didn't end the match. Eventually, Nick Aldis puts in the Texas Clover Leaf, but eh, time expired. Whoa, we had a time limit draw. But uh, what was fun about this time limit draw versus AEW's and New Japan's time limit draws, they actually had a very set time six minutes and five seconds. That's, that's the TV time limit. I don't know how they figure out the numbers. I, I don't care. They did do. Ex they did explain once. I'm not that concerned. You have six minutes and five seconds. That's it. It's not a half hour long match. Good. It's not an hour long match. So, it, the face. The pace was quick. It was fast. It was a time limit draw. But you know what? This was one of them time limit draws I can live with. 
Because this was a tough and tough mess, baby. Then we have Ricky Morton. He wants five more minutes. Aldous is like, I'm the champion. I'm here for the six minutes and five seconds. You know what? Whatever. He was game. I'm out of here. Makes sense. I said I would wrestle this match, the stipulation being it lasts for six minutes and five seconds. I wrestled the match for six minutes, five seconds. I'm done. Makes sense. I like that. Then we're to Eli Drake and James Storm taking on Cole Cabana and Mr. Anderson. And where is someone? So someone's missing. I forget who, though. But Cole Cabana, he, he's in. Cole, Cole Cabana's great. Um, this is a classic wrestling match. It's really hard to say anything bad. It was fast-paced, really good back and forth. Though. Cole Cabana and his antics are probably second only to the master of antics. That's Yano! <laughs> only Yano has better antics than Colt Cabana. Uh, Mr. Anderson gets the next... It was Cole Kamana taking on Eli Drake, and it was a good, really good back and forth. It was fun. Uh, James Storm got in. Uh, Anderson's next. Eli hit some flying clothesline. James Storm, wow, he's still really good. Uh, he can. He. I was surprised for a guy that big. He can actually skin the cat too. That's impressive. I don't think I could ever do that. That's when you play yourself. You're upside down. You hang on to the ropes and you. Pull yourself up over the rope back into the ring. James Storm is a big guy, folks. And he has some muscle to do that with. That was pretty good. And then again, they had one of my favorite moves, the side of Russian leg sweep. I'll always mark out for that. And there was the picture-perfect elbow. That was cool by Eli Drake. That's actually a really high elbow. I like that. Uh, James Storm eventually did get yanked out of the ring by Mr. Anderson. And something scream must have happened. So I know he pulled his legs out, and it looked like his like foot really awkwardly hit the ring steps, and he looked like he was like in legit pain. Because then Mr. Anderson, for some reason, like said, "Okay, it's like uh, I screwed up, so I'll go in there." He grabbed the referee. The referee says, "Ah, you can't put your hands on a referee. I'll DQ for that. I'm gonna I DQ'd you for that." So then ring the bell. It's like, whoa, the ref has authority in these matches. That's good to see. But I'll tell you what. Honestly, the whole thing was a surf and turf match. Whoa. NWA is getting on par with WWE. That's weird. Uh, then Colt and Colt Cabana and Mr. Anderson go at it. And Nick Aldis comes out, does his promo, the wild card show up, and you know, the Rock and Roll Express. And they announce their next member, who is Big Papa Pump. You listen to me, you fat son of a bitch. You fat bastard. Because I'm the one, the only Big Papa Pump. I am the genetic freak. All the ladies like me. And Scott the Skyner looks amazing still, by the way. And, and even Nick Aldis, as Scott Skyner's walking to the ring, he's like, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Whoa, I thought only he'll do that. Scott Steiner for your return to NWA. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. I know Scott Steiner showed up in Takara for the King of Trios. It was Scott Steiner, Petey Williams, and Jordan Grace. And that was just... I'm upset that I missed that by... I don't even know if I was working or not. But that's okay. And I'll tell you what, that was NWA Power. I was shocked, because NWA Power, that was a surf and turf one hour of TV. Or maybe not one hour of TV, but definitely one well, one hour well spent on the YouTube. And that's it. That's the show for this Tuesday. Um, I will be back. Uh, unfortunately, not tomorrow. 
tomorrow I have to work. I don't. I don't feel like doing NXT. NXT is a NXT is the thing with NXT is that the the good of NXT is absolutely amazing. The the bad of NXT is is meh. And there's always that one stinker of a match for some reason. And Mauro Ronaldo, I, I I'm I don't I'm just tired of his announcement. Like everything doesn't have to be Mamma Mia. I don't need pop culture references. You know what? Once the show's fine, not every move. He's a little over the top. And, and it's actually a little more annoying than, than oh my god. So that was it. Seriously, I got Mark this done on done on my list. Well this is a live team, but stupid YouTube. But that's the show for today. So I'll be back Thursday with my predictions for Impact Wrestling. Friday is gonna be SmackDown. Saturday I have off. And then Sunday, I'll be doing my impact review when the show's over. Everyone else have a... Probably by the time this is up. Good day. Morning. Early afternoon. Something like that. Bye, folks.